Hello, welcome to the incomplete map of the cosmic genome, which is now one year old. And in that one year, we have interviewed over a hundred scientists, as well as many writers, poets, and performers who are also curious about what it is to live in this universe. Remember, other universes may well be available. In the next year, we hope to continue to expand and get more and more international names. In fact, I hope that when we take the infinite monkey cage across America, that we'll get a chance to increase the number of US scientists, as well as the number of scientists from across the European continent and and beyond. In fact, if you've got any recommendations, why not tell us? Perhaps you're a scientist who might be interested in talking to us, and we might be interested in you. That's just me doing a kind of voice that makes it look more official. Anyway, let's have a look at what we've got so far in the last year. Like, I'm on the verge of having a big science poo. Like, I've got about three pieces of original research, 80% finished, and I've got to get out of this room and go and finish them right now. So angular momentum is brilliant because it explains both eggs and how to keep a satellite stable. Goats are really closely related to whales. You're expecting the nice cut and dried black and white of the space shuttle bay and the space station and, and the swimming pool, but instead you are pulled out into the universe on one side and the world on the other. And it is dumbfoundingly beautiful. It's an interesting interaction, the way that um, science and fantasy, uh, engage with each other. You know, it's like my favourite animal at the moment is the ninja slug that, you know, fires its bits into the, you know, little... Um, I was always interested in biology, definitely, and I remember, I don't know who bought it for me, but I remember having a microscope when I was quite little. I think I was probably at primary school when I had this microscope. The solar wind is able to open up the Earth's magnetic field and sort of peel the magnetic field lines back. So we've got the sun over here and the Earth here. It is such a terrible cliche, but I, I love Darwin. I love him. Darwin was extremely good at the art of explaining, in particular, the very key part of the art of explaining, which is putting yourself in the position of the reader and anticipating, yes, the reader will miss that, the reader won't understand that, the reader will need to have that fully, more, more fully explained. Here's an opportunity for the reader to misunderstand, which I must plug. There are, you know, annoyingly anti-science kind of statements you hear from time to time, like, Science doesn't know everything, as if the corollary is, therefore it knows nothing. Which is obviously ridiculous. One hopes that at Large Hadron Collider, now that we've found the Higgs, we'll move on and maybe discover some other new particle or particles that make up dark matter. Super volcanoes, those are the, you know, you tend to see those on Channel 5, but actually they're, they're real. There's one under, under Yellowstone National Park that could explode. Apparently, the, the evidence is that one exploded in Indonesia, and I can't remember when it was, but several hundreds of thousands of years ago, and perhaps more than that, and, and the human race was reduced to only a few thousand individuals, mm. uh, potentially as a result of that eruption. So, yeah, they, these things happen. Enjoy it while you can. That's yeah. my, my um, advice. Whatever way you look at it, current thinking does suggest that life individually may well be finite. Despite the recycling of the atoms, it's very unlikely that something will Well, no, life itself. individually is finite, isn't that's it? There well, are no, there are well, no, no immortal I mean, things. I think not, there might be an immortal planet. You know, there is we don't know, planet. do we? We've got, we've got to be reasonable. We can't say there's definitely no life after death. Yes, we can. The, the, How can we say there's definitely not? That's a very unscientific thing to say. Well, I mean, I might think it's highly unlikely. Thermodynamics. But, you know, Derek Cora. He, he had a
Uh, a journalist wrote to me uh, the other week, and he actually said, he said, if science is so good, why do they keep having to change it? And, yeah, I know.